What's going on guys? Welcome to Everything Always. My name's Michael Roman, aka All Fires. Now, as if Loki Season 1 and Multiverse of Madness didn't prepare us for seeing different variants and of the same character in the same TV show or film, along came Quantumania's post credit scene with the Council of Kings and completely blew the lid off that thousands of versions of Kang in the same place and at the same time. And obviously, for two Avengers films in Avengers Kang Dynasty and Avengers Secret Wars, having the multiversal option to have multiple variants of the same character at the same time opens up huge possibilities for not only final battles, but really the size and scope of the crossover. Getting to see maybe, say, multiple variants of Wolverine, as we just reported yesterday, it seems as though Hugh Jackman has clued us in, that might be a part of the upcoming Deadpool. Well, as it turns out, Jeff Loveness, the guy who wrote Quantum Quantumania and the writer on the upcoming Avengers King Dynasty spoke candidly with Gizmodo about writing Avengers 5 and also mentioned some characters he wasn't going to use, including the Fantastic Four. We're going to talk about exactly what he said, which characters he excluded, and what that ultimately means for King Dynasty's team up with Avengers. We've actually had a couple of industry insider reports at the end of last year that line up with this nicely, and we're going to talk about both of them in context of each other. We're breaking down the latest coming officially from the writer on Avengers 5 and characters he he doesn't expect to use as part of the film. But first, I want to tell you about my friends over at comicbookdirect.com. They are a brand new website that's launched that's really making it easier than ever to get your hands on the comic books you want. They work with all the major publishers and have any individual issues you may need, but what's awesome about them is they make it easy to go ahead and subscribe to an entire run. Here I am subscribing to the X-Men run. Now I'll get every issue weekly and I don't have to go out of my way or make stops at the comic book store. They've got everything, collectibles, figures, manga, comics, so go ahead and check them out. There's a link down in the description, and if you sign up using code Everything Always, you'll save 20%. Again, that's comicbookdirect.com. Okay, so in the most recent Gizmodo interview, they asked Jeff Loveness, the writer on Avengers 5, this, quote, Speaking of Kang, you're obviously writing him again in Avengers Kang Dynasty. It's got to be an interesting process because you're writing this movie based on all these other movies, most of which don't exist yet. Some of them exist in different forms, but in others, there's no actors, there's no directors. What's it like writing a movie when you have all this sort of raw material that's not even formed yet? This is what Loveness said, quote, Yeah, it's definitely a tricky thing, but much like when I took on the Ant-Man job, I can't really focus on all that outside stuff. I've just got to lay down the bones of a good story, hopefully, and find the characters I want to tell in it and it becomes a game of ping pong with the other people. Like whoever comes on and does Fantastic Four or Blade or I'm probably not even using those characters, you know, but it all informs itself. And so you just keep an ear open and if someone says, hey, Blade's gonna jump in, go for it, man. But it's up to me to focus on my movie and, you know, work with Michael Waldron a little bit on this thing to make sure it all kind of makes sense. I think the second you start looking at the other 25 movies coming out, you get a little lost in the sauce. Now, to me, there's actually two huge takeaways, but let's focus on the first. He mentioned by name, he's probably not even using the Fantastic Four and Blade, two films that we suspect will have come out by the time he's done that movie. And it's interesting, he picked those two franchises again because there's other franchises and other stories he does have to account for that aren't done yet, but these franchises would have been done, as in they'll know what the stories are and know where the characters will be at the end. Now, I think this means certainly two things. Number one, if Fantastic Four are not set to feature in Avengers King Dynasty, then they will show up and be a part of Avengers Secret Wars. And I think the same goes for Blade as well. But on a good note, I think this means he's definitely looking to focus on forming the Avengers again. Remember, Kevin Feige on stage when introducing the Thunderbolts spoke about a world without an Avengers team. He did the same for Captain America New World Order, and we suspect that that team will not yet be formed as we sort of forge our way towards the Fantastic Four film. Avengers King Dynasty can look to be that film like a Avengers 1 that reunites the team and focuses on those characters, which, as I mentioned in the prologue, the most recent rumors from industry insiders about how they would sort of craft Avengers 5 King Dynasty would be looking to focus on the Avengers and bring that team back together. Characters like Moon Knight, Shang-Chi, Hulk. We recently heard that Spider-Man might actually take the lead. Of course, Shang-Chi will be a part of it in a major way because Destin Daniel Cretton, who directed the first film and is obviously directing the second, which they might even work into the slate before King Dynasty. As I said, I think they end up shooting those concurrently. It'll focus on characters like Rhodey and Vision, basically putting our Avengers team back together. And truth be told, that's a lot of characters' arcs to try to tackle. And at once, you don't really need the Fantastic Four to be a part of that film. I know we want the Avengers films to be as big as possible, and I think the ambition is definitely there with doing Avengers Secret Wars, but I rather like the idea, and especially if these rumors are true, 
as it would appear here now as Jeff Loveness is talking about not focusing on those characters, of putting the Avengers back together, working that as an actual Avengers film and not overstuffing it because at least one of these Avengers titles does need to focus on the team. Presumably they won't have room in a lot of the other franchises coming out between now and then to address this. I think there's an obvious roster there that we can still discuss as the many years go by before this film actually comes out. Characters like Captain Marvel, She-Hulk, and Miss Marvel, I think they're all a shoo-in for this. And there's also some ancillary characters that typically and historically in the comics have not been a part of the Avengers that might end up making the roster or squad in some kind of way. There have been rumblings and whispers that Kevin Feige sincerely wants Daredevil to be a part of the Avengers as well. And you know, if they're gonna have a Spider-Man, a Shang-Chi, and Destin Daniel Daniel Cretton's going to do something similar with the direction, focusing on some really intricate hand-to-hand -hand combat. Daredevil would be highly suited for that as well. But you guys let me know down below, who do you want to see make the next Avengers squad? I think, obviously, it's pretty easy to guess who's going to be a part of it. They didn't do solo TV series for characters like She-Hulk and Moon Knight not to involve them, but I think there are some holdovers and OGs that are going to be a part of it as well. Someone like Rhodey, who's now getting his own film in Armor Wars, you don't keep him around for this long not to use him. I think the next Avengers squad might actually be a lot bigger than some of the teams we've seen before. But as always, let me know your thoughts. Who should make the squad? Who should be left off? I'm all ears. Quickly, let's get into the giveaway stuff before I let you go. All right, we are still giving away a PlayStation 5. The next milestone is to be given away with Guardians of the Galaxy. If you want to be entered to win, all the same rules will always apply. Be a subscriber by hitting the subscribe button, then leave a comment down below. And because it's truly random, the more videos you comment on, the better chance you have of winning. All winners will be announced at the end of videos the same way we're doing here. The best way to keep up with the content has always been to hit the notification bell with all notifications turned on. And as always, if you like today's video, I'd appreciate it if you'd hit the like button. I know I've been addressing it at the end of every video here for a while, but I want to mention it again. Please remember that when there is a winner, they'll be announced live on screen with the comments shown and with my voice. If you need an example, there was a PlayStation winner just a week ago. It's at the end of the Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania post credit scene breakdown video that I did. I do not announce winners and comments. So if you should get a comment on this channel or really any channel on YouTube, really any platform telling you you want a prize and to contact them at any time, please be vigilant. Remember that anybody can use anybody else's photo, that anybody can ask you to contact them on Telegram or WhatsApp and tell you that there's somebody that they're not. As soon as they ask you for shipping, that should send up a red flag. No YouTuber I know will ever do any of those things. No YouTuber will ever ask you for shipping. I certainly don't. Please be safe. Please be vigilant. And you are doing the entire community on YouTube a huge, huge service by reporting those comments. There's little three dots right by the comment. Just go ahead, click it, report. YouTube will go ahead and suspend those accounts while they review them, and that saves anybody else from having to see those comments as well. Again, guys, there are filters here on YouTube tools they've given us to combat this, and I have it set to all the strictest settings, including an experimental setting that actually holds back a lot of you from, well, not a lot of you, but some of you from commenting, and I have to go ahead and manually let those comments through. Trust me, I am doing my best to combat them by also deleting those comments myself. You're helping me by deleting them and by reporting them. And so I sincerely appreciate you guys. I'm sorry for the inconvenience. I don't know when YouTube's gonna be able to get around this, but bots are bots for a reason, and it looks like, at least for now, they're here to stay. Thanks for checking out the channel, guys. Stick around, we'll be posting again real, real soon.